If you've attended yoga classes, you know that yoga teachers almost always suggest you breathe in and out through your nose when you're practicing. Why is this? For the answer, stay tuned. When we're practicing yoga, we almost always breathe in and out through our nose. Now there are some yogic breathing techniques where you may inhale or exhale through the mouth, but that's the exception. Almost always the breath is through the nostrils. Now there are many reasons for this. One is that it's much kinder to your body to breathe through your nose than through your mouth. And this isn't just true on the yoga mat, this is true pretty much 24 hours a day. Um, when you breathe through your mouth, the air just goes straight down into the lungs. When you breathe through your nose, the air is warmed and humidified and things like pollen and pollutants, some particulate matter, etc., are removed from the air. The other thing is that the air, if it's dry, the air is humidified. And so warmer, cleaned, filtered, and humidified air is much kinder to the delicate tissues of the lungs. But in yoga, we've got other things up besides that. One is that it's more calming to the nervous system. Now, part of this has to do with the greater resistance to airflow in the nostrils as, as compared to the mouth. Uh, when you breathe through the nose, it takes longer for the breath to get in now and, and to move out. This means that you're breathing at a slightly lower rate than you would probably if you were breathing through the mouth. A slower breathing rate tends to be calming to the autonomic nervous system, tends to all by itself start to shift the balance from the paras or excuse me, from the sympathetic nervous system, so-called flight or flight response that many people in the modern world spend most of their time in, and shift it to the more calming rest and digest system is sometimes called the parasympathetic nervous system. So, uh, and, and this, by the way, is something that many yogis, and, and, and this advice really comes also out of Ayurveda, believe that you should breathe in and out through your nose also when you're exercising. Now, the way many of us have been taught to exercise, and if you go to a health club and look at people on the Stairmasters and the treadmills and the elliptical machines, you'll often notice that they're kind of huffing and puffing. <laughs> and that kind of breathing actually is totally stimulating the sympathetic nervous system. So here we are often trying to do something, exercise, that's good for our nervous system and helps fight stress, and we're often inducing more stress while we do it by breathing through the mouth. Now, it is possible, although it takes a few weeks to train yourself to do this, to gradually switch from exercising breathing through the mouth, which may be necessary, for example, when you're running, you may not be able to bring enough air in to satisfy your craving for oxygen. Uh, through the through the nose. But if you start to build your way up, and there's a book I would highly recommend by Dr. John Duyard called Body, Mind, and Sport, where he describes this in a lot of detail. But basically the idea is, say you're a jogger, and you can't right now jog without having your mouth open the whole time. Okay, what you can do is start, say, with a fast walk and see if you're able to breathe through your nose just walking quickly. And if you're able to do that, you can step up the pace a little bit. Um, get to the point where you have to switch to the mouth, back off, and for a day or two, or maybe a week, exercise at that level. Then again, try to slowly inch up your activity. 
generally within two or three weeks, even world-class athletes, even Olympic athletes, have taught themselves to completely breathe, uh, particularly in through the, uh, through the nose. It's okay sometimes if you have to exhale through the mouth. Although one of the things that happens when you uh, exhale through the nose is it dehumidifies the air on the way out. So you maintain some of the moisture that's, that's good for you, uh, good for your nasal passages, etc. Okay, and the final reason that I generally recommend to students that they do a slow ujjayi breath where you make a little bit of a sound with the breath, and I'll talk about that in a future video. But you do a gentle ujjayi breath which allows you then to maintain mindfulness of the breath, to notice the flow of the breath as it moves in and out, as you practice yoga poses, and this greatly increases uh, the benefits of yoga practice, I believe, makes you more aware to the subtle indications, for example, strained breath, that can indicate that maybe you're pushing too hard in, 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 in a yoga pose, doing something that could even cause an, in, a, a, an injury. So be safer, be more mindful, and take nice care of your lungs. All these benefits come from breathing through the nose. Okay, all for today. Thanks much. Namaste.